All right, currently reporting from somewhere in Anaheim, near my apartment. You guys don't care about that. What you do care about is today's session, which is gonna be from the Hustler Casino. It's not gonna be a live stream though. Instead, I'm gonna bring you guys along for one of my usual games that I host on Saturdays, and that's gonna be a 5100 No Limit. Right, so as mentioned, today we're gonna cover a 5100 session that starts in like two hours, which doesn't give me a whole lot of time for Chipotle and filming this, so gotta make this quick. This Saturday game is one that I created on my own, and I build the list for it every week. So if you guys wanna play, if anyone out there is interested, shoot me a message on Instagram letting me know, and we'll see what we can work out. But yeah, that being said, one more thing to go over before we jump into the hands. This Sunday, May 28th, I believe that's the exact date, I'll be playing online poker, as I do sometimes, on Club GG. Here are all the details, so if you guys wanna join me, that's all you gotta know. Link is in the description, signing up is pretty easy. I'll be playing either 1-3 or 2-5, nothing crazy. Last time I played, I ended up losing like $6,000 over four hours, which is by far my biggest online loss, kind of embarrassing. I'm gonna try to fix that this Sunday, so if you guys wanna tag along or play alongside me, this is the time and place to do it. But anyway, that's all I got for you guys right now. So without any further ado, let's head to Hustler Casino and play some 5100. All right, guys, here we go. Underway at this 5100 private game. Let me quickly introduce the lineup for you guys. We have Nick, Mike, Suited Superman, Maria Ho, the legend herself, Dentist Dave, also a legend. We have Kai, Kevin, myself in seat eight, and then Sashimi in seat nine. So quite the cast. Let's go. In the first hand, I look down at King Jack unsuited in late position. I make it 300. And it gets to the big blind who raises to 700, so just over a min raise. King Jack unsuited, not the best hand to call a re-raise with, but given that we're in position and facing essentially a min raise, I make the standard call and we go to a flop of 983 rainbow. A couple of clubs out there, I do have the king of clubs, so not really a whole lot going on for me aside from some backdoor stuff, but it is a board that should favor me at least a little bit more than him. So when he bets $1,200, I think folding is more than okay, but I'm gonna set the tone right now early in the vlog. When I play in my own private games, I try to generate action and you know make sure everyone's having a good time by splashing around a bit. So that said, I make the call and we see a decent turn card, the five of clubs, giving me the flush draw, but also uh, improving hands like seven, six, maybe some potential two pairs with like eight, five suited or five, three suited, you know, hands I might be in there with, let's be real. So interesting to me that he decides to continue betting, this time $2,000. I think about raising, uh, I feel like that's not the worst play ever, but instead I just call. Would also do this with some strong hands. So yeah, not necessarily expecting to improve on the river, even though that would be nice, but more so planning on potentially bluffing on good river cards. The five of diamonds isn't exactly the one I had in mind. Pairs the board and it makes it less likely I've got two pairs or sets and you know that kind of stuff. But he checks. He's got $14,000 behind. And uh, like I mentioned, I'm here to give the action and I wanna put in a bluff. Now I think around 5,000 would be fine, but I end up going all in for his 14K, which is almost double the size of the pot. Would be doing this with hands like full houses, and that's pretty much it. I guess maybe three of a kind as well. But anyway, uh, my opponent ends up tanking for a long time, obviously looking for a fold here, but sadly he calls. That's not gonna be good news, and sure enough, he turns over pocket queens without a club. Kind of a tough call on his part, but good decision from Mike, and just like that, we start off the session down a bunch of money. Let's see if we can turn it around in this next one. There's an early position open at 200. Next to act, that's suited Superman, he makes it 300. That's right, from 200 to 300. Some serious poker being played here. I look down in the small blind at pocket tens, probably the best hand, so I raise it up to 1500, and only Key makes the call. 
aka suited Superman. So heads up, out of position this time to a bad board, Ace King Four Rainbow. Of course, when I say bad board, I mean for my exact hand, but generally speaking, I'll have a lot of hands that like this kind of board. So I decided to continue betting small, just like I would with all my possible hands. 800 into the pot, and my opponent makes the call. Turn card's interesting, it's the Queen of Diamonds. So now I could have hands like Ace Queen, Ace King, all the possible sets, except maybe Pocket Force, and of course, Jack-10 suited. As I have two of the possible tens in the deck, I think it's okay to continue representing all those mentioned hands, as well as the nuts. So I decided to bet $5,000, the size of the pot, expecting him to fold hands like a suited King, or perhaps even a weak Ace at this point, but that's optimistic thinking because my opponent makes the call. So, uh, looking for some help on the river, and what do you know, the Jack of Hearts comes out of nowhere, giving me a straight and a disguised one at that since now the only hands I would really have that make a straight are like Ace-10 suited and Jack-10 suited, both of which aren't too likely considering that there's an Ace and a Jack out there. So, with all that in mind, it's a question of how much to bet or do we want to check, perhaps let him bluff, and I think the play here is to block bet. Not something I advocate too often, but in this exact situation I think it makes sense. Could also be doing this with some cheap bluffs, as well as, of course, the nuts like I have in this case. So I put in a 10% of the pot sized bet, 1500 bucks. He doesn't seem too pleased with this. I was sort of expecting him to perhaps turn his hand into a bluff, but based on his initial reaction, it doesn't seem like he's gonna do that. In the end, he ends up calling and we win versus ace three of diamonds. So that's top pair turned the nut flush draw, but then we get there on the river, kind of a funny hand. And this one's going the right direction. We win an $18,000 pot. And the next one, Maria Ho opens to 300. Kevin on uh, my direct right gets to him and he makes it 1500. I'm next to act on the button looking down at King Jack of Diamonds. A pretty good hand, but a little bit weaker uh, in this exact situation since there's a raise and a re-raise already ahead of me. So I think letting it go, despite that sort of being a tight play, is more than reasonable. But this time I do not do that. Instead, I raise myself. Cold calling I think also has some merit, but I don't really like doing that stuff too much. So instead I raise it up to 3,800. Maria folds, but when it gets back to Kevin, he's not going anywhere just yet. He puts in the money and we go heads up to a flop of Jack 10, eight, two spades and a club. Pretty good board, we've got top pair with a decent kicker, but not much else aside from that. And it's also a board where he's gonna be pretty strong, whereas I'm not gonna interact too often, so I decide to check it back and exercise some pot control. Turn card is good, it's the eight of diamonds. Pairing the bottom card makes it less likely he's got a hand like 10-8 suited or pocket eights more importantly. So when he bets $2,000, again, such a small size, of course, nothing to do but continue. Could even raise here sometimes, I think, but I decided to just call and keep all possible hands intact for my opponent. River card is as good as it gets. It's a three of clubs, absolute brick. This time he bets 4,500. And again, such a small size, it seems like almost always we will have the best hand. So raising for sure has merit. But I decide to just keep it chill and make the call. My opponent doesn't seem too pleased, so I turn it over. And sure enough, we've got the winner. We're gonna be taking down this $20,000 plus dollar pot. Moving right along in this next one, there's a few limps before the small blind makes it $1,000. This is Kevin once again. I'm next to act in the big blind and I've got King 10 suited. Diamond variety once again. And I think the best play in this scenario is to re-raise because if I call, then the limpers are gonna come along as well. And then we're playing like three or four ways, not in position, you know, it's not the best situation, but for whatever reason, I decide to just call this time and the limpers fold. So probably the best uh, possible situation. Heads up to a flop, which once again is good for me. King 4-3, giving me top pair and a backdoor flush draw. My opponent continues betting though. He puts in $1,000, nothing to do but call, and we see the three of hearts on the turn. Doesn't look too dangerous, and I'm happy to see my opponent checks it over this time. Honestly, that's nice because I was a little bit worried about being up against ace-king, king-queen, pocket aces, you know, stuff that beats me. But once he checks the turn, I feel a lot more comfortable with my hand. Now it's a question of do I want a value bet or just check it back? And considering that I would have very few bluffs in this situation, I think it's worth checking back. So that's what I do, and we see the eight of clubs on the river. This time my opponent bets $2,500. Nothing to do but call, so that's what I do. And we end up winning against pocket queens. So quite a fortunate situation for myself. Things are going much better since that disaster of a first hand. 
Next, there's a middle position open to 300, and I'm in late position with Ace-6 suited. Good enough to re-raise, I think. Not a lot of playability, so just calling doesn't seem ideal. I make it a 1,000 to go, and that's a mistake, because when it gets back to middle position, the initial raiser, he makes it 3,000. Now it's back on me, and I think the best play here is to just fold, maybe call once in a while, and this is gonna be one of those times. Now, of course, you guys always say in the comments that whenever I say something is a, a low frequency type of idea, I never actually do that. But of course, I don't include all the times I fold. So just bear that in mind, okay? Give me a little bit of credit. Anyway, heads up to a flop of ace, queen, five, two spades, and a club. Not great. We've got top pair with a terrible kicker against someone who's shown a lot of aggression pre-flop. And that right there is the whole problem with playing hands like ace, six, but what am I gonna do, right? My opponent bets 3,000. I make the call. Turn card is a little bit better. It's the five of hearts pairing the bottom card. This means that we're now chopping against hands that had us in bad shape like ace jack or ace 10 suited, but of course still in trouble against ace king, ace queen, and all that other strong stuff. This time my opponent bets $4,000, which of course is not ideal. I'm not loving this situation whatsoever, but we're getting such a good price. He only bet around a third of the pot size, so can't go anywhere just yet with top pair. I make the call. And we see an interesting river card. It's the seven of clubs. Praying that my opponent checks since uh, if he bets, I don't know if I can call with a six at this point. Might have to fold it depending how big he bets. But when he puts in a 5k chip, I mean, what am I going to do, right? That's one quarter of the pot size giving me ridiculous odds to call. So whatever, man, if you've got me beat, take the money. I put in the call and he gives it the old head shake. So that's good news, I turn it over and we are gonna win this 30K pot with a six suited. Moving right along in this next one, there's an early position open to 300. Middle position makes it 1000 and similar to a few hands ago, I look down at a playable one, King 10 of hearts. Just like I said in that other hand, folding is probably the best option considering all this pre-flop action, but like I also said earlier, I am here to uh, bring the entertainment, and if that means losing money and playing a little bit wider than normal, so be it. So that's what I do. I raise it up to $2,500. Initial raiser folds, middle position makes the call. Heads up to a flop, queen, jack, 10, two clubs and a diamond. Interesting flop, you know? Ace, king is the nuts on this board, which I could certainly have. I also have an open-ended straight draw and bottom pair. But all that being said, there's also plenty of hands that my opponent could have that are ahead. So when he checks, I decide to start with a small bet. I think that makes sense on a board like this. 1600 into the pot, my opponent makes the call. Turn card's not great, it's the jack of spades. Generally gonna be better for him than me, so I decide to check it back this time. And we see an interesting river card, it's the nine of clubs, giving me a king high straight, but of course, completing the obvious front door flush draw. And you know, if he's got a full house or a flush or ace king himself, we're in some trouble. I'm probably gonna check this one back if he checks again, but instead he puts in a bet of $4,000. Kind of a close spot if I'm being honest. Of course, it seems a little bit ridiculous. I have a king high straight. Just make the call, right? Well, yes and no. On one hand, I can't blame you for that uh, line of thinking, but on the other hand, I can't really see what bluffs he would have in this situation. Sure, he could have some, uh, I don't know, random ace highs. But, I mean, I can't even think of what bluffs he would have. And if he's not bluffing, what do we really beat, right? <sighs> I guess, like, a straight if he has an 8, but would he even be betting that? I don't know. I think it's kind of close, and in the end, I end up making a relatively tight fold. And my opponent shows me king-queen of spades, which means we were chopping. So, in a sense, I was kind of right because he was not bluffing, but at the same time, I was completely wrong because... I had a hand that could have gotten half the pot, but I put it in the muck. So nice hand, Kevin. This one is going to him. Next, Dentist Dave opens to $300. I look down at King-3 suited, a couple of seats to his left. And of course, against an open King-3 suited, you should probably just muck it. But Dentist Dave has been having a rough go, so I decide to give him some very light action. Raise it up to 1,000. When it gets back to him, he does exactly what I feared and jams all in. However... It's only for $10,000. Now, of course, I say only, like that's not a lot of money. It's definitely a big chunk of change, but I'm getting an okay price. Honestly, not really. It's 9,000 more to call, and I'm probably not in the best shape against hands he would do this with, but like I said earlier, he's been having a rough go, and I'm happy to give Dentist Dave some action, especially in my game, so 
I make the call. <laughs> I ask him if he has a pair or ace king. He says no. He shows the ace of clubs. That's good news. That means that I am at least live, looking to hit a king or a three, I believe. I show my hand. King three of diamonds is face up. We're going to war. Off to a run out on which we flop a pair of threes. So it looks like we might win this one. Turn card is a queen. It's not ideal. River is a five. And then he shows ace king. So he was messing with me when he said he did not have ace king. And in fact, karma comes back to get him as we end up winning with the old king three suited. Sorry, Dentist Dave. I got a little bit lucky this one. Trying to give you some action, but this time we find the very fortunate three on the flop. In this next hand, the straddle is on to 200. Middle position opens to 600. This is Kai. And I raise in position with Jack nine suited to $2,000. This exact hand is not really strong enough to call, maybe on the button, but I'm not on the button, so I prefer to either fold it or occasionally re-raise with it. You guys can guess what I'm doing here. Make it 2,000, my opponent makes the call, so heads up to a flop of king, king, three with two diamonds and a club. Decent flop for me, I'm gonna have all the big pocket pairs and you know the occasional trip kings, so when he checks, I bet a thousand bucks, and he makes the call. Turn card is the four of spades, pretty much a brick. This time when he checks, I decide to continue betting. $5,000, expecting him to fold some medium strength pairs, all his ace highs, you know, stuff like that. But he makes the call, so that's not good news. Probably gonna have to give up on the river, which is the four of diamonds, double pairing the board. He checks again, and like I said on the turn, I think this is a good spot to just give up. He could easily have a king, he could have any slow played pocket pair, including aces, queens, jacks, etc. So yeah, I think waving the white flag is probably the play, but I think betting also has some merit. We have one of the worst possible hands we would ever have. We have some removal to hands he might have that call down, like pocket jacks and pocket nines. A little bit optimistic, but this time I do decide to take the risky route and put in one more bet. After all, who would possibly be bluffing in a situation like that, right? So I put in $15,000. That's how much I'd bet if I had aces, ace king, you know, any king, obviously, since now any king is full house. Maybe even pocket queens going for some thin value. Uh, when my opponent doesn't snap call, that's good news. He doesn't look happy with the situation at all. Come on, Kai, muck your hand. Come on, fold, fold. Nope, he makes the call. Man, that's, that's not gonna cut it for us. I let him know I'm bluffing and he embarrasses me right away by turning over the old ace eight offsuit. Completely destroying me and killing all my hopes and dreams for this session going a lot better because we now lose a $46,000 pot. Got work to do, <laughs> nice hand Kai. Moving right along to the next fun hand of poker. I think the hands are fun today, aren't they guys? I think they're fun. And you know, if you guys don't, you definitely will enjoy this one. I straddle to $200. Maria Ho opens on the button to 500. Small blind and big blind fold, and I look down at ace four of hearts. Now, a suited ace like this against a button raise, I think is a good candidate to both call and re-raise with. This time, I re-raise. I make it $2,000 to go. She started the hand with around 20 or $25,000, and she decides to utilize 6,000 of those dollars against me, making it 6,000 after my $2,000 raise. That is a pretty strong play on her behalf, but my read on the situation is, I think she knows I could be getting a little out of line, so she might be a little out of line herself, maybe with hands like ace five suited, or ace jack, or ace 10 offsuit, the occasional ace queen offsuit. Of course, she could certainly have hands like aces, kings, queens, you know, the good stuff, but I think there are enough bluffs in her arsenal that jamming all in has some merit. Now. Let me be completely honest, this is a total punt on my behalf. Well, not a total punt, sometimes it's a decent play, but just folding ace four suited after she makes it 6,000 is definitely the uh, logical play, but I do not make the logical play. Instead, I announce all in and she calls right away. So I got caught, uh, my read on the situation was definitely wrong because she says she has pocket aces. So she asked to run it twice, I of course oblige. And we have an uphill battle here with ace four versus pocket aces. What do you know on the first board? We flop a pair of fours, turn three of a kind, and then river quads. <laughs> Completely unreal. But in case that wasn't crazy enough, on the second board, we flop a gut shot. Don't improve much on the turn, but the three on the river 
gives me the wheel straight, and we end up cracking aces on both runouts for a $42,000 pot against Maria Ho. Yeah, kind of an insane hand. It actually took me a while to realize that I won the bottom board as well, embarrassing as that might be. But yeah, I mean, this hand was just absolutely insane. You don't see something like this every day. Definitely a memorable hand, and I'm glad it was captured on the vlog. Shortly after that one, the straddle is on yet again. There are two limpers before the button makes it 1200 to go. This time I'm in the big blind with a real hand, ace king, so I raise it up to 5800 and only the button makes the call who was the initial raiser. So heads up, going to a flop out of position, which comes down pretty good. It's king jack eight, giving me top pair, top kicker. Of course, we might be up against hands like king jack, pocket jacks, pocket eights, but can't be scared of monsters under the bed, so I bet $4,000 and my opponent makes the call. Turn card is good, it's the five of hearts, shouldn't really change anything. Could go either way here, I think, but this time I decide to check it. Being out of position, I think it's a little bit better to check strong hands sometimes. And this time my opponent checks it back, which is definitely okay with me. River card is great. The three of clubs. Pot's around $20,000, and I'm going to go for some value now. I put in around a half pot size bet. 10k into the middle. My opponent thinks for a little while. I'm kind of dreading uh, him announcing all in, since he's got like... 30k or 35 in his stack but in the end he ends up just calling that's going to be good news i presume and sure enough ace king is the winner we're going to take down this forty thousand dollar pot this next hand is uh just insult to injury if i'm being honest long story short i re-raise kevin who opened to 600 on my right he jams all in for 8k and i've got ace four suited once again this time diamond variety so of course I make the call, happy to give him some action after he's been having a bad run of cards. He shows pocket jacks, so we're going to need some help yet again. And yeah, I mean, I can't make this stuff up unless it was on camera, guys. We end up hitting an ace on the first board, and then we river an ace on the second board. That's right. Once again, we win with ace four suited, going twice versus a hand that had us in terrible shape pre-flop. I'm sorry, Kevin not your day and uh yeah i mean i'm not proud of it but we end up winning this one as well for just over sixteen thousand dollars lots of blood in the poker streets today and right on cue there is a straight flush versus straight flush between suited superman and nick now of course there's four to a straight flush on the board so not as crazy as it sounds but still not something you see every day by any stretch in this next one, the button opens to 500. This is suited Superman. I make the call with Ace Jack in the big blind. Worth mentioning that Ace Jack offsuit is okay to re-raise with, I think, in the big blind, but occasionally calling with it is good too because then when you hit an ace or top pair on the flop, it's a little bit more disguised. Anyway, heads up to a flop of King Jack 8 with two spades. I check, he bets $700. I've got second pair and top kicker going nowhere just yet. Make the call and we see a great turn card, the Jack of Hearts, putting two flush draws out there. And it's also gonna be a better card for me than for him, I think, just generally speaking. And it's also nice that this time I actually have it. So I think it's okay to lead on this card once in a while. This time I do just that. 800 into the pot. My opponent raises to 2,800, 2,000 on top. Now putting in another raise, I think maybe has some merit once in a while but this time i decide to just call considering it'd be pretty tough to be bluffing if i were to take that other route so i make the call and we see the nine of diamonds on the river i check it over to him and sure enough he puts in one more bet seventy seven hundred dollars now of course this seems like a snap call and i don't blame you but it is a little bit dicey that he's betting this big on the river but of course we are beating hands like aces or weaker trips that might be value vetting this way as well. So if somehow we're beat, that's fine. I make the call and suited Superman gives it the head shake saying he was bluffing. So I turn it over and we're going to win this one as well. The night is definitely going better now. Let's see if we can keep that going with ace queen this time. Straddle is on. I raise it up to 500 and only Kai makes the call from the straddle. So heads up to a flop which just highlights how hot I've been running in the past few hands. It's queen, queen, six, rainbow, giving me trips 
with the best kicker. He checks, I bet $400, and I'm happy to see he makes the call. Okay. Turn card is the 10 of spades. This time when he checks, I size up to $2,800. We'll also be doing this with hands like gut shots, uh, suited broadways that have some sort of straight draw, you know, maybe uh, other random bluffs like turn flush draws. I think my opponent knows all that though because he makes the call, keeping me honest. Unfortunately for him, I've actually got it this time and I've definitely got it when the river comes, the ace of clubs, giving me essentially the nuts. I mean, we lose two pocket aces, but unlikely he's got that, right? So when he checks, I'm gonna continue betting just like I would if I had one of those bluffs. Pot's around 7,500 bucks. I put in $10,000. Betting big with good hands, I think has merit for sure on boards that you'd often be bluffing. This is one of those boards. My opponent doesn't call right away, but he doesn't fold right away either. So fingers crossed that he does not release his cards. And what do you know, after a few seconds, he does neither of those options, but instead announces all in for just under $40,000. I of course make the call and show right away. Not really interested in making my opponents show losing hands, which I presume he's got. And sure enough, ace queen is good enough to win this one. Top full house. And we win an $83,000 pot. Biggest hand of the night so far. Kai let me know a few hands later that he had ace six for the rivered three pair. Decent bluff from him. Pretty cool play, but unfortunately I actually had it this time around. Sorry about that, Kai, but many more battles to come, I'm sure. In the next one, we are going to be going up against Sashimi, who's been on a heater lately, so always a treacherous endeavor. In this one, she straddles into the pot for $300. She's buying the button or doing something like that after taking a walk. Folds to me on her direct right, and I look down at pocket kings. So good enough for a raise, I think. I make it $1,100, and she raises to $4,000. I feel like she's got a decent hand because she's been a little bit snug today and she only has like 17,000 behind. So I decide to just go all in. I expect this might even look more bluffy to her. And maybe that's exactly what happened because she ends up calling with pocket tens. So we're gonna run it twice. Unfortunately, she flops a set on the first run out, but she does not improve on the second run out. So we're gonna chop it up. $34,000 pot. In the end, we end up winning like 75 bucks or something. I'll take it. Better than losing, at least. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the last interesting hand of the night. And this one, it folds all the way to me in the small blind. Sashimi is in the big blind on my left, and I look down at 8-7 suited. Typically, my strategy from the small blind, after everyone folds, is to just limp into the big blind. And then, depending on what they do, I either call, fold, or sometimes raise. This time, she makes it $500, and I decide to call. Two of us going to the flop, which is ace, seven, six, couple of spades, and one heart. So we flop middle pair, and that's about it. I guess technically I have a backdoor straight draw, but not too much power in that. I check it. She bets $500. Not going anywhere with middle pair just yet, so I make the call. And just like much of the night, I get lucky on the turn. The seven of hearts, giving me three of a kind yet again. And as mentioned earlier, I think leading on cards that are better for me makes sense. And it's always nice when I actually have it, as is the case this time again. So I put in $800, and now she raises to $2,000. Reminiscent of the hand earlier against Suited Superman, where I bet the turn with trips and got raised. This time, I decide to re-raise again. Like I said in that hand against Suited Superman, there's some merit to it, but not something you want to do too often. And this is one of those times, it's a little bit unorthodox, if I'm being honest, because most of my bluffs... Uh, on the turn, like straight draws and flush draws would probably just call once she re-raises to 2,000. But I think occasionally putting in a raise of my own makes some sense, mainly because I suspect she's doing this with some sort of hand that's trying to buy a cheap river, like ace-king or ace-queen. And against those hands, I'd like to regain the betting lead. So I make it $7,800. She thinks it over for a little bit and makes the call. River card looks good to me. It's the queen of diamonds, hopefully giving her aces up. And if she's got ace-king, uh, I don't suspect she's going to go anywhere regardless. She's got around 19000 left in her stack, just over a pot-sized bet. And let's face it, if I had any bluffs, I would be jamming all in. So doing it with three of a kind makes sense as well. So that's what I do. Sadly for myself, she snap calls, which looks like bad news. And sure enough, she turns over ace-7. <sighs> Heartbreak. The night was going so well, and we get kind of coolered on this last hand. Now, of course, I didn't have to play my hand as aggressively as I did, so if you make that argument, 
I wouldn't blame you, but it's still kind of a cooler. We both turn uh, three of a kind. Well, rather, she turns a full house as I turn three of a kind. And that's the reason we lose a $56,000 pot to end the night. Still, things went pretty well for myself. And as always, I hope you all enjoyed the hands. So let me be the first to say that's not normally how my private game goes. Today I ran super hot, but in fact, I'm the biggest loser in this game, I believe. I'm down like two or 300,000 across the last three months. So don't get the wrong idea. That being said, today was a whole lot of the opposite. I ended up winning like, I don't even know, I haven't counted yet, but you guys will see the results right here somewhere in the vicinity of 75 or 100k which of course is ridiculously good considering that this game didn't play super huge or anything kind of sucked to uh, lose that semi cooler near the end against sashimi but anyway it went incredibly good i ran super hot and uh, i got a bunch of interesting hands so hope you guys enjoyed those don't forget about this sunday i'll be on club gg playing online Here's the info once again, if you guys want to sign up, link is in the description. I'll see you guys on there on Sunday. But yeah, that's it for today, guys. As always, thanks for the support. Thanks for watching. And until next time, good luck at your local tables. Peace.